I don't have any kind of assembly manual or instructions to go to in order to disassemble this trailer. I'm just trying to take it apart without causing any more damage to it. I began this process by removing all the latches on the sides for the top and removing all the lights on the sides front and back. The majority of screws on this pop-up camper are square drive and that holds true in the lights and the latches as well. All of the exterior lights will be replaced by LEDs and I'm thinking about flush mount LEDs but I'm not sure at this point. The spare tire holder needed to be removed next, and it required a 7 16 socket. Next, I began removing the vinyl trim on the corners. The vinyl trim, in my case, was dried up and cracked, but that vinyl trim covers the screw heads underneath it. These screw heads are probably going to be rusty. So some of them, even though they are square drive, will strip out. I used a Dremel tool sometimes to grind a slot into the head of the screw, and then I could use a flat blade screwdriver to get the screw out. Also keep in mind that these screws are screwed into wood, which may be rotted. And when it's rotted, the screw may just turn and not come out. So you have to use some pliers or vice grips to pull the screw out. Now I begin the process of removing the slide out beds from each end. There are seven sixteenths bolts on both sides. One side has four and one side has two. I don't know why, but that's the way they designed it. Once the bolts are all removed and you can slide the slides in, and it's time to remove the platforms. The wood on both platforms is rotted and will have to be replaced. Here I'm pointing out that these platforms are staggered. One is to the side of the other. I'm not sure why they did this either, but they are not in straight alignment with each other. After the beds were removed on each end, it was time to remove the aluminum trim all the way around the top of the trailer. It's held in by square drive screws. Once the aluminum trim is removed, then it will be easier to remove the skins off of each side. To help with removing the trim, I had to remove the slides from each side as well. They were held in by square drive screws. I labeled each one in their location so that it would be easier to put them back where they belong.
The aluminum skin is held in by staples. A good pry bar behind it will be able to pop out the staples without damaging the skin. You have to be patient and the pry bar has to be on the staple. Staples underneath and any staples that are exposed are going to be rusty. So I used a Dremel tool on the bottom ones to grind off the staples to make it easier to pull off the skin. What I found out with this back end piece of aluminum was that it was sandwiched between the floor and the bumper. So I was going to have to remove the flooring before this skin is going to come out from under it. It looks like this skin is put on from the top down. So they staple in a piece, slide in the piece underneath it, and then staple that piece in all the way to the bottom. Then the bottom piece, they roll underneath and staple it to the bottom of the trailer. Again, sometimes it's easier to grind the staplers off with a small grinder than it is to try to pull the staples out. Be sure to take care of yourself and wear eye protection when you're using a grinder of any kind. The material underneath the aluminum skin is wood paneling and all of this paneling has got water damage to it from the years and all of it will be replaced. The vertical jacks at this point were just sitting in a slot and they were able to be tilted out for removal later. The wall got to a point to where it was just easier to just yank the whole thing out at one unit rather than try to piece it out. After all, all the wood is going to be replaced anyway. Then the walls became like dominoes. Once one was removed, it was easier to remove the next one and the next one. This is a detailed video of the lift system. There's a lot of mystique and mystery surrounding the cable lift system. And all it is is a hand crank with a bunch of pulleys on it. And you've got springs for, that push up on the bottom of the risers on the vertical lifts.
The lift system is held in place by a combination of square drive screws and 7 16 nuts and bolts. All of the walls have been removed and we're down to the flat floor. And thank goodness we're almost done with this. It's, it's good to see progress. Removing the flooring became a little bit of a hassle. First thing you have to remember is that all this wood is going to be replaced anyway. So trying to be careful and delicate and taking it off carefully went out the window pretty quick. Some of the fasteners on the flooring are going to be rusted and when you try to unscrew them, they strip out. So it became easier to locate the fastener heads and I used a air grinder with a carbide bit to grind the heads off of the fasteners and lift the flooring off of the trailer. If I was unsure of where the fasteners were that were holding down this flooring, I could look underneath it and see where they were screwed through the frame. Then I could locate the heads of the screws and grind them down The flooring is two pieces and it's not evenly split down the middle. Once you've got enough fasteners ground down and there's only maybe one holding it on, you can get enough leverage to pull the board up and get it off of the frame. Thanks for sticking with me through these four teardown videos. I know they were long, but I hope you learned something. Now comes the fun part of assessing and rebuilding it from the ground up. More to come, YouTube. See you soon.